Now in this video we're going to look at one of my favorite circuits, that is the voltage doubler. We are going to switch the doubling capacitors, they do have a diode drop though so it's not quite a uh, double but it's uh, close to double, somewhere about 90% the way we have this wired up uh, now. In any case, we have the uh, capacitors and to determine the direction of the current flow through that uh, capacitor right there, we have a couple of MOSFET transistors. So there's the pin layout, I'm not going to go over that in detail, I covered this in earlier videos. A lot of people hate that schematic symbol, I'll just mention that right now, that I'm using for these uh, two transistors. I got it from the art of electronics, so consult with that if you have a problem uh, with it. But in uh, any case, we are going to switch it manually, just for demonstration purposes, just to get a better feel for the circuit. A, uh, like a, I'm going to use 555 timer in an upcoming video and maybe other integrated circuits, a lot of them can't get the full 5 volts. You lose like a couple of diode drops worth um, for because of the transistors that are inside particular integrated circuits. We don't need any power though, so this is a great uh, circuit. I mean it doesn't need any current and uh, thus there's no power actually. That's switching them for the most part, just voltage without current. And uh, so you can use uh, any integrated circuit that gets you that voltage you want, no matter how limited it, it is with the power that it can provide. You can even add a resistor for extra uh, protection of the gates because they're sensitive. Um, but all it responds to is the voltage. It doesn't depend on current other than a slight shift when the voltage change. Hopes that makes sense. But we're going to compare using 5 volts with uh, about uh, about 4 volts because this isn't asking for current. Well, we'll probably get about four volts at the gate through through the dots. And also we go to ground. Um, so either the full five volts or about four volts, three and a half volts or so um, through the diodes. Either way that's high, that will turn on this transistor will have a low uh, output right there. This transistor will be off. So that's five volts there. We'll lose about uh, 0.6 volts charging uh, that capacitor and thus we'll have about 4.4 volts across this capacitor whenever it is charged. So that is the uh, default state you should aim for, have it uh, be charged most of the time. But uh, once we have that charge, 4.4 volts, which is instant, that's why we're using low value capacitors, 100 microfarad right there, um, so we can have brief surges of uh, current because it's not a terrible amount of current because the capacitor charges so quick but uh, that will have about 4.4 volts built up across it. So that's what the high input, either way there. Then we drop it low. That's why we got uh, that. And uh, so we can either keep going between those two or those two, whatever. But we drop to low. Then what that does is low means that transistor turns off. That one turns on. And again, current's not flowing through. Remember that. It's just a slight current when the voltage changes. Other than that, it just is the voltage, no current. So low in means that this transistor will be on, that one off, and we'll have 5 volts behind the uh, capacitor right there, working its way to ground. And uh, so it's going to build up to about 9.4 volts at this point in relationship to ground, um, but it's going to push current. And uh, so we can get up to 8.8 .8 volts if you go fast enough, this capacitor will charge to 8.8 .8 volts, and even with a load, as long as this is going fast enough to provide the current needed, you're going to have 8.8 .8 volts out. So you can see current going that way and then that way. So the current has to move twice. The power supply has to you uh, move that current twice to get the, twice that voltage out. So you're turning current into more voltage. The current that you put in is going to be higher than uh, the current you get out. But uh, the voltage that you put in can be lower and the voltage you get out. Hopefully that makes sense. So in any case, this capacitor just stores the charge for like a load or whatever. We're not going to actually apply a load this time. We're just going to measure with a multimeter. It's going to store the charge that we can measure with a multimeter. So now we're just going to do a quick uh, voltage measurement with the multimeter. So this uh, may be a little bit cooler with the oscilloscope. But uh, we'll just look at the raw numbers here. So we have about uh, 3.6. I have this resistor here to discharge the capacitor. But it's not going to discharge completely because power can still come from the power supply through those two diodes. So we're seeing those two diode drops because uh, I just got to go anywhere. There's a connection to the positive rail. 
there you can see we got uh, five total volts, but we're losing a couple through the diodes. As we saw, about uh, uh, 3.6 there. And here it's going to be about 4.4. Uh, so just giving approximate numbers right there. We got that diode drop. That's why that one's getting lower. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pluck the resistor. Now we can uh, charge that uh, capacitor. It would not charge any more than that. And uh, this one is charged. It's connected to ground because we got the high input. Now we're going to uh, boost it. So you're going to see the voltage go up when I touch the uh, negative supply there. So it went up a lot because um, we don't have, or we have a big voltage difference. The, the more that the voltages get closer, the less you're going to see it go up over time. But in any case, uh, best case scenario, if there's a load, is uh, probably about 8.8 .8 volts approximately. But since there's no load, the multimeter is hardly taking any current. You can see we can get above it. So don't expect this much voltage with a, a practical circuit. But I'm just going back and forth from the positive supply to the negative supply, doing that uh, charge and then pump that I talked about earlier. And now we're gonna try out the next scenario. So this may work down to four volts, but it does not work down to three volts. With five volts though, it uh, seems to work pretty well. As I said before, we got 12 volts at the supply rail. Going through these two diodes though, we have a pull down resistor too. Whatever current does trickle through them uh, will um, basically go through the resistor and uh, give you a slight less voltage. But in uh, any case, there you can see we got, it looks like about 3.8 volts at that point. So the gates should see that whole voltage. That's the main takeaway. So I'm just gonna let this be floating now. Most of the time keep it uh, high though so that uh, the transistor holds the negative side of the capacitor low, so it stays charged. But again, we'll look again, and that is the voltage of the capacitor when it is discharged, because uh, power supply still provides power uh, to it, other than the uh, diode drops. So there we go. We have about uh, 4.3, I lost my connection. And okay, I think I can hold it there with uh, one hand. So. When we go positive, I don't think, yeah, it's not gonna go up the uh, capacitor charged. Looks like it's going up a little. Now we're gonna go, I can do the negative supply there. Negative there. Now you can see we pumped it, and uh, so obviously we're getting the pump, but let's see if we're losing voltage in the process, or see if we can still exceed 8.8. .8. So if you don't have enough voltage, then uh, the end channel enhancement mode uh, MOSFET, the one at the bottom there, will not conduct fully. But uh, since we're going completely to the negative rail, the P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET will always uh, conduct uh, fully. But yeah, there you can see, we're still getting the same voltage. Even though we have uh, lower voltage on the uh, high side than going directly to the positive supply. So I think any single supply op amp um, that doesn't go all the way to the positive supply will uh, probably work uh, really well with this setup right here. And to end it, I thought we'd take a closer look at the board. So gray band is there, gray band is there. I know it's hard to see, um, but a uh, lot of integrated circuits, as I said before, you don't get the full positive voltage because it does get some diode drops similar to this. So we're just kind of simulating the output of a lot of single supply integrated circuits, which uh, usually can output to ground when they're low, no problem. But you got that voltage drop when it's high. Now let's get to the circuit. I think this was pretty straightforward. Um, we charge, again, gray band there, gray band there. We charge the capacitor with a couple of drops um, that way for that one. And then this one charges when the output is low right there until we uh, get the output high and pump uh, more charge uh, in that direction, discharging that one, pump, charging that one even more. But uh, we will uh, look a little closer at the uh, circuitry here. The uh, BS250 here, it's a P-channel enhancement mode uh, MOSFET. The uh, 2N7000 is an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. So they just have opposite chemistry, otherwise they work the same. And uh, the pin layout though, this is the front of the uh, BS250. That's the front of the 2N7000. The BS250 is in an E-line package, it's bigger in the back actually. And um, so that's just how they came. Um, the BS250 is uh, affordable, so that's why I use uh, that one. I got it from DigiKey. Whereas I got this from the Jono's Electronic Semiconductor Kit, which I got from Amazon. And uh, it's a common one, 2N7000 right there. So in any case, their gates are tied together. That's usually called a jumper cable. 
middle pin for both of them is the gate. And then this is usually called a jumper wire where we're given our signal. By the way, I turned the uh, power off. And uh, so the uh, drain now, when it comes to the uh, pin layout, it's actually opposite between these two because they're both facing front that way. So this one, you got the source on top, the uh, drain on bottom there. This would be, if you're looking at the front, the left, and then right. Whereas the 2N7000, the uh, drain is on top instead of the source for that one. And the source is on the bottom instead of the drain for that one. So you can see the source is directly to a power supply rail. But uh, since they're opposite polarities, it's going to the opposite power right there. And then the drain is coming to wherever your load is uh, headed to, basically. And uh, so it uh, is going to be the opposite polarity of what uh, the supply is, where it is headed to right there. And uh, so when that's more positive, ultimately it's headed to uh, ground. And then when that one's uh, more negative, ultimately the power on the other side is coming from the uh, positive supply. That's why it's a push-pull.